Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my floss tube channel. Happy to be here with you today to talk to you about my stitching about things I finished and things I'm still working on I also have a giveaway to announce the winners of at the end of this video so stay tuned for that and it's Sunday May the 8th 2022 Mother's Day it's been a pretty restful day I've tried to keep busy keep my mind off of missing my mom but also having some sweet remembrances of her. I posted some photos on Instagram earlier this afternoon. If you follow me over there, you've already seen them, but it was good to look back and remember all that I have because of her and also to be so grateful to be a mom myself. So if you have celebrated, I hope that it went well and that you are grateful for, if not a mom in your life, at least some women that have built into your life and shown you a lot of love. So, and if you haven't, then I pray that you will be that to someone else. I have several things to show you today. It's been a little more than two weeks. I've been really busy with different things with the kids and with, um, just some doctor's appointments and things with my husband, nothing wrong, just kind of routine stuff. But that took out a couple days and I've been filling in as a substitute preschool teacher at our church and that has really worn me out <laughs> working with uh, about 16, three and four year olds. So that was a long day. I had hoped to film that day and that was not gonna happen. But I do have, like I said, some finishes that I wanted to share. I think all of them have been on Instagram. I try to do stories on there as well as I'm finishing. So if you aren't following me, um, it would be worth checking out, I think. Um, one of the first ones I finished was a little bit late, it's almost over, spring is almost over, but I've actually already finished summer on this one. So here is Spring Whirly Gig by Heart and Hand. I didn't bring the pattern down here, but this is pretty close to the colors used. I did use a special thread from Frankie at A Wicked Stepmother. It's the rainbow thread you can see on the eggs and the butterflies and the edge of the spring. It was really fun to work with. I didn't know how it would variegate, but it worked really well. And then um, the antique button was a gift from a friend in Ireland. I'll show you some more things she sent me, but the rest was just some wired ribbon I had for forever. And then a button um, from the friend, like I said, and then some sorry silk that I dipped in blue. It almost looks gray, but that's okay because this is kind of galvanized. This is just a Hobby Lobby. Um, it was on half priced. So I had admired this for a while. In fact, I wanted to get the piece that looked like a grater, but they don't have it anymore. So I just got this and I could put something in the top if I wanted it to be like a base, but for now it's just sitting like this. And I had another finish for my summer whirly gig, but I didn't really have any place for it on the wall. So I actually prefer it to be kind of a, a sitting piece. So I'm going to use the um, summer that I've already finished and put that on here probably in a couple weeks time, but I'm happy to have that one done. Um, it's getting a little bit ahead, but I will share on that piece something that was super um, handy to finish. I found these coasters. I'll show you some more Hobby Lobby haul, but they were on clearance for $1.49 for four. And I'm always struggling to cut a perfect circle. It's never quite right unless you use like a die cut machine or you're just really, really good with cutting. And this size was so perfect for the 32 count, or was it 32 count? Actually, I think it was 25 count for the 25 count spring whirly gig. So just depending what you're finishing, even an ornament would be nice. If you find some cork, um, or paper coasters like this that have enough of a shape to hold and then lace around and cinch in. It really does kind of um, make it easy. <laughs> so I did put a little bit of batting on that when I finished it, but not very much. And I stitched on that rick rack. I usually do glue, but I'm out of the quick tack glue 
Otherwise, I always fear that I'm gonna get gloppy with my hot glue, and so um, stitching it on, though, was surprisingly easy. So I would encourage you to give it a try. Just tack it on and run your stitch under the rickrack, and it goes really quickly. It's easier to me than glue this time. So I can't say that every time, but in this um, case it was. And then the coaster trick is a handy little tip if you find those on sale. I wouldn't spend a lot of money on them. This ends up being about, um, I don't know, like 30, 50 cents a piece. So that was worth it to me. So save me the trouble. So there's finish number one. Finish number two is really just kind of an update. Um, I had shown this rabbit and I'm still trying, I think it's sitting pretty well right now. I can't get it to stay completely, um, Oh, it's probably gonna flop over here in a second. I have it kind of wired on with a cl um, paper clip right now. I'd shown you this just glued onto the cereal box that I was using. And um, it's after Easter, so I wasn't in a rush. I wanted to show it to you on the spring, which I don't know, maybe you can see it better on the wall over here. <laughs> it looks so cute on Instagram. I might Insta insert that photo here because it's a better picture but on the spring it is just adorable these are the springs that i was waiting for from my friend leslie she provided several of these hang on just a second sorry dahlia might have a little issue she's being put out for being naughty <laughs> she was chewing on something she shouldn't but um i was trying to make this more secure before i gifted it to my friend but i have a couple more of these and of course dahlia ate my punch needle from um, ultra punch so I'll be getting another one of those soon, I hope, to finish my punch needle, but um, after Easter, it's not as much a, um, what's the word, deadline. So it turned out really cute though, and, and really all I did was just sandwich this on. Here's some pretty scrap of paper that I have from a digital download, and I just wrapped it around the actual pattern I cut out on a harder stock piece of paper, and then I wrapped the weaver's cloth around that. There weren't instructions on the pattern. It does show it finished on a spring, but there were no instructions as to how to, you know, actually get it onto the spring. I was thinking that I could bend this um, coil to have a straight wire up. And oh my goodness, if you've ever um, fiddled with these bed springs, they are very strong there I had a pair of needle nose pliers in my life and my dad said he was here that weekend he said there's no way you're going to get that to bend without heat you'll have to have like a, a torch <laughs> I was like no I'm not I'm not willing to do that so I just kind of have it like I said kind of um, braced precariously but this would be cute for for bunnies or for you know spring butterflies or frogs any other kind of thing that you think of or a bird <laughs> that would be on a spring if you see those in some salvage or antique stores they're fun to pick up so just a fun finish and then the other finish I had was number seven in my Plum Street samplers they're getting a little harder as they go on because you know the song is progressing so instead of having one um, partridge in a pear tree I've got seven things to stitch now but they're babies so this actually turned out to be one of my favorite blocks I changed my white from 3865, which is the winter white in DMC2, I couldn't find it. So I just grabbed a Blanc and you can see how much more, this was like a an Ecru, I think actually, but you can see how much more that stands out. And I think I prefer that. So I'm gonna keep using Blanc from here out, but there's day six. And then this is the one I finished day seven. And those swans are so pretty. I love the way Paulette started those. And I didn't have a blue to make the water. So I just, but, oh, it's at sunset. They have yellow waves. <laughs> so I am over the hump now on those. I'm on day seven, so I'm more than halfway. And I was getting a little tired of them, but they really do not take that long to stitch. I think eight through 12 might take two days instead of one because there are so many different repetitive pieces. Like you can kind of see just real quick, like there'll be nine ladies to stitch or, you know, the 10th day. There's, there's a lot more little pieces, but they're quick. So loving that project on my own red dyed fabric I call Aunt Ruth Red. And I've listed those threads several times. So I'll try to list those down below if you're interested. And let's see, the other finish I had was something I kind of made up by inspiration from Michelle McGraw, the um, birthday girl last week, my Sophia, uh, turned 17 and I had wanted 
to give her a little gift and I thought, let me just stitch her a little pillow with her name on it. And so that's what I did. And she loves like bright tie-dye colors. Her room is like psychedelic. <laughs> if you know her personality, she's very sunshiny and fun. And so these colors just made me think of her. I actually wasn't gonna put anything but the yellow, but um, I had a little bit of blue dye on my finger when I picked up the fabric. And so I thought, well, it's gonna be tie-dye. <laughs> And then as I was doing it, I was also inspired by Frankie's spring floss that I used. And I did um, a beautiful rainbow striped DMC. I just used some Blanc that I had and I painted it with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, like every color of the rainbow. And I did not know how that was going to stitch up. I, I don't know what I'm doing when I'm dyeing floss. I don't want to like give anyone instruction in that <laughs> other than, you know, I've never had any trouble with my red floss that I painted. Blue and purple are a different story. I think there's something in the blue and purple dye that make it much more stainable. My fingers were actually turning blue when I stitched with this floss. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a haze around the letters where the blue is. I think it's fine. It's not really noticeable, but I could see it as I was stitching and thought, I set it in the oven. Um, I think it was 220 degrees but I must have missed a step. I need to do more research. It probably needs some kind of fixative or some kind of, um, I don't know, soda, ash, vinegar, something where it will actually set that blue and purple. Cause like I said, they were coming off on my fingers. So I know I didn't do it right, but this piece will be fine. And it was just for fun. I had this scrapbook fiber on the edge there that I thought worked perfectly. And I always like to do a bell if I can. So there's the name piece. I also had this trim. Um, I think this is some that I dyed myself a while ago. And that one I did soak in vinegar. So it took the took the color better, but it's just bright and fun. And then as a series, I have other plans, but for now I um, just did this little happy birthday pillow here. And it was so fun. Again, I used the rainbow flosses on the happy and then a, just a black threadworks I had for birthday. When I started stitching the happy, I was afraid it wasn't really showing up because I used some, um, paint a paintbrush with just the totally concentrated dye in the writ bottle and I just kind of tapped it over my finger like this if you've ever tried that splatter technique it's very kind of almost 80s <laughs> or just kind of fun I thought that would be an interesting experience and or experiment and some of it kind of bled you can see the Y has that blue others though it, the dye was just kind of sitting on top of the fabric I didn't have the fabric wet because I didn't want it to do what the blue fabric or the blue dye did but overall, I think it's really fun. I might experiment with that again later for another piece, but um, just playing with dye like that in scraps is just so fun to me. So it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I enjoyed it. And I used um, just some wool on the back. I need to glue this down a little better. Like I said, I'm out of my Aileen's, but I had this black polka dot fabric. My intention is for all six family members to make a name pillow. So our birthdays are mostly in the summer. I could just rotate this through like my daughter Emma's is next and she likes um, kind of more of a peachy color and I'll have that to go with this pillow. So this one will stay. I keep them in this little tear tray. Right now the tear tray has some houses that I picked up at Target and um, just some kind of neutral colored stars. But um, I found some patterns and if I make them and I think I will I'll share the pattern from YouTube that I found it's super simple to make felt cupcakes and I thought it would be really pretty to make some felt cupcakes have this happy birthday here and their name and then it would just be kind of a summer display for all our birthdays and then in February for my son so that was just a fun idea and thank you Michelle for sharing your inspiration she was doing a series of patterns with an elephant I believe and then a happy birthday song which I might find that pattern next year I can always just kind of add to it and it's just kind of a perpetual calendar where you can or perpetual birthday <laughs> 
a celebration where you can switch them out and kind of bless your family in that way. I've felt a call to be stitching for friends and for family a little more, so I'll share more of my plans with that in my next video. Probably I don't have that quite together in my mind, but I really liked that happy birthday project and I encourage you to try something like that. I used my sampler motto um, book from Brenda Keys to get the alphabet, but there's alphabets for free all over the internet, I'm sure, and if you've been stitching for a while, you've probably got some different alphabets that you can use, and it's not perfectly centered. I got the happy um, a little bit too far over, but I just used some back stitching and made a little swirl, <laughs> so I didn't want it to be something that took too long. I was literally doing it the day before and the morning of her birthday. I finished it the morning of, and I did use some um, fun fibers again and some um, buttons and a little belt. So those are kind of my go-tos for finishing, and they are stuffed with walnut shells, which has been a fun go-to because it's nice and heavy for a tray, a tiered tray or something like that. So those were my three finishes, and I have several whips that I wanted to share with you. One of them I had hoped to finish. Let me show you that one last, but I've done some good work on my Village of Hawk Run Hollow. It is such a giant project, as you know, and if you followed me on my channel, I've pretty much been stitching it from the beginning of my channel. And I'm on block, let's see, block nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, yes, block nine. So I hadn't done any of this the last time I showed you, but I've gotten a lot of the lettering done and started to kind of block in these horses. There's a fountain in the middle here. It's a pretty detailed block as they all are, but it does have a lot of words. Hope you can see that there. So hopefully that will go well. And instead of just working on it, I'm supposed to do it five days. I've actually started working on it some in the evening anyway, just putting in one thread because five days is not enough to get a block done. And if I'm gonna finish it this year, I've blocked in two more blocks. That takes quite a while to do, you know, a 92 inch uh, or 92 stitch wide block. Um, I've got to get busy. So I might continue to go down here and start filling in the black. I've gone back and forth on, some people put the black, there you can see it, on that cemetery block and some people don't. I know Teresa Vanette thought it was not very balanced to have the black, but I actually kind of like it. So I think I'm gonna do the black. But here she is, almost eight and a half done. So about 80, 80%, 80 is that right? A little over 75%. But yeah, she's coming along very well. So happy with the progress there. And that lettering, I just love it. It's um, Lagoon by General Arts. I don't know if you can see the variegation there. It's very bluey green and I think it's so pretty. It's fun to see that variegation as you're stitching it. The other one I got some good work on was my Blackbird What Remains is Love. It's a it's a pretty small piece really. Um, this was a release from Traditional Stitches for their 20 year anniversary and I was gifted it by a member of my guild, the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild. It was um, um, kind of auctioned off, I guess, or just they did a drawing for all the guild members and I won it a couple days after my mom passed away. So I just felt like it was meant to be for me to stitch this and I was working on it with Ginger Shull. It's kind of a stitch after Ginger. <laughs> She's already done, but I had finished that house and the flower. And as I was coming to the top of my house, I might call this um, episode on account of my obstacles <laughs> because there have been a lot of obstacles to my stitching this month. I've just had a lot or this last April. Um, I'm late in reporting what I've been working on and I feel like I've just had a major obstacle with every project, <laughs> either just not being able to get my bunny to stand upright or um, the spring roller gig went well, but my Huck Run Hollow is just so much work and it's overwhelming. And this one, I left four stitches off in this stem and I didn't discover it until I got to the top and realized my heart was way low. <laughs> and so what I did was just split the difference on that heart. It's maybe gonna crowd my letters, but I, I'm pretty sure I can make it work. My border will be fine. It's just the interior of these motifs that's gonna be a little bit tricky. 
but the colors are so beautiful. I did switch out because I just can't leave well enough alone. I wanted to try a variegated silk that's called Shades of Wine by Dinky Dye. Um, instead of having to do two different colors on that flower, which is what's called for, it actually was just one floss and it variegates so much that it, it looks a lot like the picture on the chart and it's a little bit darker. I don't love pink, um, like a mauvey pink so much. I, I used to, my whole bedroom as a child was decorated that way. Maybe I wore myself out of pink, but in my home, I just don't really have a lot of pink. So I wanted it to be more of a burgundy color, kind of like these pillows you can see. So I love the way that turned out and that yellow or that house is actually Schneckly. I thought Schneckly was a green, but it's, it's kind of yellow and it's really cute. So love the colors, love the sentiment, what remains is love, just a beautiful um, piece. And I'm very happy to have had a guild member share it with me. It was very kind and generous. And then the last whip, let me make sure I'm not working. Oh, I, was, I have another one finished, but I'm gonna save it for the next video because I am behind in my reporting on what I've been working on. This is my uh, whip go piece from March, I wanna say. I have taken so long on this. I had very little done when I started, um, when I pulled this for Whipco and I thought, well, I'll be able to finish it as a, a goal and I am gonna finish it, but it's kind of knocked out all my other Whipco pieces because it's just been a booger. It's so much more stitching than I realized and that's the way it goes, isn't it? And you think, oh, that'll be easy and quick and not so much. Cause even after I got that 3000 stitch tomato done, I still had to do all of this vine and my lady, there's a lot of stitching. I still have half of the vine to do and these tomatoes, but I think I'll get it finished. The um, finished size is gonna be nine by 10, and I really want it to be square because I'm gonna be looking for a square frame. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna put a water can over here. If I can get a water can that's about an inch wide, and then maybe do some more swirlies up here, I'll be able to balance it so that it's a square. I don't want to do a custom frame for this. It's really kind of just a fun folk art piece that I'll have in my kitchen. So it's not like a fine, you know, sampler. I want it to be kind of rustic looking and it can easily, I think, add a teapot here or not a teapot, a water can, a silver water can. And I used my mom's hair color and eye color because I initially thought of her with this piece. She loved tomatoes so much. I'd even thought of, of gifting it to her, but it took me too long to finish. So now it'll just become a memory of summer and growing tomatoes. And we didn't have a garden that much, but my grandma Helen did. And my mom ate tomatoes like apples. So she loved them very much. So those are the things that I worked on for the most part. Let me make sure, like I said, I had one other whip, my spring at Hollyberry Farm. I will show you next time. I got a lot of work done on that. But those are the um, three whips that I primarily focused on in the end of April. And I will show you the ones I'm working on this month in my next video. I did have a couple of gifts and um, fun, Paul, Mother's Day stuff I wanted to show you. I had a cute little wallflower that my friend gave me this morning. It was a cross stitch tube and Dahlia just ate it. So I might stop by Bath and Body Works and see how much that cost because that was so cute. And Dahlia had it as quick as I could sit down here and start filming. I looked back and she was chewing it. So, ah, but this I will keep much more carefully. This was my gift from my husband. I picked it out myself because I love Lori Mitchell and I thought this cats cats was so cute as soon as i saw it i have two cats right now one of them looks a lot like that tuxedo and then i have my torty she's not that fat but she reminded me of that calico and i i love Lori mitchell figurines they just make me smile and i feel a little guilty sometimes that they're kind of expensive but um it's been a really hard year <laughs> and i thought i'm gonna treat myself to this little girl and jim was like go ahead so here's my cat's cats. And I have a piece um, from my Whipgo that I'm gonna show you that is gonna sit by her. I think it'll be a cute little display. So that's a new Lori Mitchell for 2022, I believe. She's a little bit bigger than the other ones I have. She's like seven and a half inches. So I was really happy to get her. I also got several things in the mail. I'm getting lots of pen pal letters. Thank you for sharing those. And I got a little package from a friend in Ireland. Like I said, she had sent me some buttons that I put on my spring whirly gig. And a bunch of little things like some ornaments and 
this little necklace kit, which I think is so pretty. She also was thoughtful and sent some things for my kids. Um, they had such a good time working on a little dinosaur excavation kit and some stickers and rings. So thank you so much. I appreciate those thoughtful gifts and I've already sent something your way. Hopefully it'll be getting there. I also went to Hobby Lobby and picked up a couple fun things that I wanted to share because I um, had not seen this fabric before. This is just an Artiste Ada. It's called, um, let's see, Vintage Oat. And I don't often stitch on Ada, but sometimes you can kind of see that modeling there. I think it looks less like Ada when it's modeled like that. And I had not seen that one before at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if it's new or I've just missed it, but I just wanted to point it out because I think that'd be really cute for like some Pineberry Lane pieces or maybe some Stitching with the Housewives Smalls. And they're so cheap. So, and it's a Zweigart Ada. So that was one thing I picked up. And then on the other clearance for 49 cents, I found these cute um, embroidery transfer patterns that you iron on. And I thought it would be so fun. I don't know if you can see this one. There's a church with some snowflakes. I thought that would be so pretty. I think they're like seven by nine or eight by 10. They're a pretty good size. So I thought that would be a really pretty Christmas pillow if I had some light blue fabric and did it in white and then um, put them on some chairs in the front room. So there's that one and some of them are spring looking. One of them kind of looks fallish, but yeah, I specifically liked that it's kind of look like a silent night scene, I thought. So just for fun, 49 cents, I went ahead and picked that up. You might check for those. I know they do like the days of the week linen towels and I always like embroidery because it's quick and very gratifying to have a finish. I think that's all I had to show you. Oh, one other thing. Um, I've been on the lookout for one of these kind of little ornament displays and I found this for two dollars at the Goodwill so I'm not sure um, if y'all have any ideas on how to use this I wonder if I could put it in a bowl or some kind of pot or something and put some strawberries at the base and then also hanging so it's not really more for Christmas that I want this um, as much as I do for strawberries so I'll show you all that as I come together with my thoughts. I know I have a honeybee berry and a sunflower berry that would be cute there. And then I have some coordinating fabric berries. So I might come up with something with this, but these are fun to find and um, don't work just for ornaments, but for strawberries. So that's the end of my haul. I had a few other things that were sent. I know I got a Starbucks gift card. Thank you so much for that. I will really enjoy that. And I also got a beautiful stitched piece from some friends as a um, just we're praying for you and thinking of you with all your loss. So that really touched me. It was a very, very sweet package. So thank you all for blessing me in that way. I certainly don't require it, but I appreciate it very much. Um, the last thing I want to show you is I'm going to try to do this without editing again. It does go a lot quicker and my computer is getting so full. So it is a little bit of a challenge, but I wanted to show you what was called for whip go. Um, and this is the one I was telling you about to go with my Lori Mitchell. I think this educated piece will be so cute next to cats, cats. I've got it about halfway done with the cat. I just need to keep working on it. It was a mania star and I'm changing it to match my torty. So she's about half stitched and then I need to do the books. And I remembered last time I showed you on my whip parade, um, back in November, I couldn't find the threads and I finally remembered I was combining the threads from my um, Marion librarian with the educated because I kind of wanted them to be a series and so I'm gonna work on this this month instead of the whip go that was called because it's smaller it's a Lottie da called Marion the librarian I found it on kitten stitcher I know I've seen it um, sometimes on eBay but I just really like that pattern with that Kind of, it looks almost Mary Inglebright like to me with those polka dots and the cherry tree and the cat. So I've got a pretty good start on the border of it. I think I filled in how big it's gonna be. So I know it's, yeah, I've filled in the border. So just gotta do a lot of stitching with those, um, the grass and the, and the dress. And I may not get that done in April, but I wanted to put some work in on it because I realized that it was the same threads as Educated, but I will hope to finish Educated this month. I want to do it as kind of a little stand up with a dome and some cute polka dot fabric to match my Lori Mitchell. And then the other, there were three calls this month. 
This one is on my finish list for the year, but again, I'm not sure I'll get it right now. I might have to take it to do some vacation stitching. This was a piece from Teresa. It's a portion of a larger sampler. I think she calls it um, Ragamuffin 3. It has a really pretty border, one of those like, I don't know if it's called a feather border. Um, I, I was tempted by it, but I figured since I had this small piece of it, that I was gonna just be happy with that because it was a lot of stitching. I was trying to see if I had a picture of that bigger sampler that this is a portion of, but I don't. But I'm, I'm almost positive it's called Ragamuffin 3 and it's very pretty. But I had started this at the Silver Needle Retreat and I have a good portion of it done. It's not any bigger than this. I just need to fill in the house and the last hay bale. This is the work that I was doing in the little time we had to stitch. I had some really pretty backing fabric. It, is from French General and Trim. Um, I think this is supposed to go inside of the book. There's also a beautiful um, rice stitch pin cushion. That's actually what the backing for is for, I believe. There's another piece of linen in here, but I may not get that done. I just know I wanted to finish this little house because it's so far along and I've had it forever. I have the book, I think, right beside me in my TV cabinet. I just need to. I'll probably put it beside the book, not in the book, because when the book is closed, you can't see the stitching. So um, I know uh, my friend Marlene had finished that a while ago. So that finally got called. And then the other two, I'll just get what I can done, hopefully finishing Educated. So those were my Wibco calls from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. I'll try to remember to link her channel below. There's a Facebook group and I have a calendar that I've made up. I haven't finished. Um, very many of my goals, but I finished two pieces almost off of that board that were three years old. So that's always good to get work done. And then the last thing before I announce the giveaway winners, I wanted to share just a quick um, kind of what's in my patriotic stitching box. I know it's a little bit early for that. I keep this kind of 12, what is this? 14 by 14, 16 by 16 box that I got at Hobby Lobby. It used to be purple and I just painted it blue and red. So it kind of matches my patriotic colors, which are more primitive than bright. Um, but I had some pretty things in here that I wanted to share just for some inspiration and some previous finishes. If you have ever wanted to see what these look like finished, my favorite one probably is this Pineberry Lane piece called, I think it's called Hurrah. It was done kind of as a, um, like a primitive quilt square. I just kind of wrapped the fabric around the bottom there because I cut it a little bit long and then frayed it out. And I put some, yeah, it has stitching along the back. Since this little gate that I keep it on is visible from front and back, I wanted it to have a, like a sandwich there. So it's all, none of it's turned, it's just, kind of frayed out at the edges. And I did use some silver um, light effects DMC for her crown. It's kind of hard to see that right now. I'm losing my light, but this is a really fun stitch. I think I got the PDF. You can make her dress white or blue. I would even consider stitching her again. I think that would be a really cute gift. So that's a Pineberry Lane um, patriotic piece I finished. Another one I had, and I'll, I'll come to the pattern in a minute, but here the pieces are finished on top. I know Celeste had done some of these and so had my friend Kim. These are some primitive stars that you make from muslin. Um, my friend Celeste, I believe used quilting fabric. I did a little bit of both. The back star is stitched. The front star is flat. They're both turned. So you do have to sew kind of carefully and clip your corners and turn them carefully, but they're really easy. And then when you sandwich them together, they kind of have that tufting. And I use some really cool old buttons from my grandma's um, button box. I was happy to use those. This was, yeah, this was some homespun instead of muslin, but the front is painted and then it just sandwiches like that. So I'll share that pattern from Etsy. I think it's still available. I showed this pin one time in a a video and someone thought that this was from the American Legion. So I don't know how my grandma ended up with that little pin, but I always admired it and I'm happy to have it on display. So I put these in a trough with some, I have another wool pillow of a sheep. I'm not sure where that's gotten to, but I have a few other little um, pillows and things I put out for um, usually around Memorial Day, I put that out. So I wanted to share those just as some inspiration. And then I have some patterns. Um, here's the sheep that I didn't quite finish. 
I have this little guy here that's going to be stuffed and he has like a wool blanket over his back and he has stick legs. So I do have that part of him, but I have finished one completely. And I'll show you those patterns when I come to them. I think that one's called, oh, that's a chestnut junction. Let me show you what that's gonna look like. It's cute. That's just a primitive sheet. So I did do one of these, but that's the pieces of what's left. And like I said, that is $1.99. I think I got it from Etsy. So if you're looking for some little bowl fillers, this one is super simple. I think I use just some uh, drop cloth, but it's called for probably to use Osnaberg, which is like a kind of almost like a burlapy fabric that you can get at Joann's or Hobby Lobby. And then the stars, those are the ones I couldn't remember. I don't know if I got those from Prims by Denise or, nope, they're Chestnut Junction as well. So that's her version of my stars. Like I said, mine were using fabric and I know so were Celeste, but mine are pretty grungy. These are a little brighter. So that's a, a pattern, I think it's called USA Stars 7. So those are fun. I'll try to link those below. I think they're still available. And a couple other, there's a freebie here I wanted to try to find because I love it. It's from Sub Rosa. There's a strawberry and a heart little pillow. And I don't think I'll get to these because I do have my no starts rule, but um, I do want to do those eventually. Another freebie from Brooks Books I think is really sweet is this um, Uncle Sam and Miss Liberty. It uses some Krynix and it's on the Brooks Books webpage, I believe, just on her site, Brooks Books. I'll try to link that as well. But isn't that so cute? I love their faces. Brooks Books does um, great with faces. Yeah, it's just her website. And then here's another freebie. I didn't realize I had so many freebies. This one is from Not Forgotten Farm. And I've seen Priscilla stitch this. If I finish some of my whip go stuff, I might just sneak this in because I want to do it so bad. I think it's so cute. It's only like 60 by 90, 60 by 80. So it would be a little pillow if you wanted to do it small. I think Priscilla finished it as a flat fold, but it's super, super cute. And you could do like a variegated blue for her dress or something that would be really pretty. So that's a fun one, grand old flag from, let me double check, that's, oh, it's called Flag Maker from Not Forgotten Farm. And I'll try to link all of these that I can find. The other pattern I wanted to share was from a sweet subscriber. She had kitted up this My Country by Lottie Daw. It's very prim. The colors she included here are, oops, I was kind of showing the pattern, are like um, more of a burgundy and a brown and a gray. So kind of more of a prim colorway, but I think it looks super cute. So I do want to try to do that, not this year, but soon. And then another start for next year. This is my favorite, Liberty's Welcome. This is a big girl. I've got to finish my Hollyberry Farms before I'll let myself start these welcome pieces, but I do intend to start this next year. So I think that's just the most beautiful border I've ever seen just about. And that wagon with the flowers, it's just a gorgeous piece. So those are some patriotic pieces I have in my stash. I want to say there was one more. Oh, also, um, this piece was gifted from a friend. It's um, by Collection Troll a lot. I don't have anything else by them, but isn't that cute? That's a little um, Uncle Sam, Miss Liberty kind of look too. But I love her hat and I love the little flags and birds. I even thought about doing them separated, like doing two little pillows. But I like that they're holding hands, so I don't know. <laughs> I definitely want to do that one um, probably next year. So that's a Liberty by Collection Trollala. It's probably a little bit older, but I was gifted that by a friend. So didn't know if you'd seen that one before. And of course, Sweet Land of Liberty by Blackbird Designs. I've had in my stash for a while. I pretty much want to do every single pattern in here. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing some of these next year, but they're not all. In fact, I don't think any of them are huge. Abigail sampler's not super big. These are more like pin pillow size. So I definitely want to do something out of this book next year. Just some fun stash that I wanted to share. And then I had one whip that I will try to fit in at the end of, probably not May, but starting in June. I'm going to be working on, I finished my Easter bunny row. I'm working on the trick or treat, smell my feet row. And the other row I have as a whip. And I haven't even looked at it yet, so I'm not sure how far I've gotten on 
It is um, Stars and Stripes Forever. A lot of people have stitched this. Oh, not very far. <laughs> I've not gotten very far. I love the colors of this though. Um, it's kind of more of my primitive colors with country redwood. I used a Threadworks Navy and a DMC and then also Weeks Crimson. So not your bright reds, but more of the burgundies that I like. And it's on a 28 count even weave just from Hobby Lobby. I don't even think it's this long. I think this is 28 count though, so it might be closer to filling that in. I was trying to find the pattern for it. I know it's in here. Here it is by Bent Creek. Stars and Stripes Forever. This might be a little bit harder to find. I know I've seen it on um, Fat Quarter Shop before, but I haven't seen it on 123 Stitch, I don't think. But if you do a Google search for Stars and Stripes Forever Bent Creek, it will probably pop up. And I will probably do a giveaway with that when I'm finished. So I hope to finish that in June. Like I said, not a huge priority, but, oh, here's another pretty one. This is by Stone Street Stitchworks. She has a series of these birds marching. I think there's a couple seasons, but I really like that one. And I have a little scrap of linen in there. Apparently I wanted to start that last year as well as my Stars and Stripes row. But yeah, here's these colors. Just three or four with a blanc, I think, for the white. Country Redwood. Oh, it's Cherry Cobbler. That's a good red. And then this blue is Threadworks. Um, I think it's called Navy Sea or something, but that is something that's gonna be coming out for sure. I did have a rule not to do starts, but I said I could do whips. So <laughs> I'm gonna work on that Stars and Stripes row. And that was all I had to show. It's been about 35 minutes. So I think that'll do for today. I'll attach at the end a little clip of me picking the winners because I haven't done that yet. I also am gonna attach at the end of the video a clip of my stitching space upstairs where I store all of my finishes. It's really starting to get pretty, um, I guess, overtaking my library space. I have four bookshelves that I've put up there as each season, like a winter one, a um, spring, summer, and fall, and it is pretty crowded in the center. I put Christmas, so I will insert a clip of that. I had a viewer, I think Kathy P, asked if we were going to get a, if you were going to get a home tour and a stitching space tour anytime soon, and I don't have it all sorted out, but I would, I was going to um, insert that stitching um, area, and then I have a lot of work still ahead of me. I'm still stripping my secretary. I had a little bit of a sec setback with refinishing that furniture piece because my first layer was not adhering as well. That paint that was on it, I showed it a couple of videos back, was much slicker than I realized and I did have to actually take off the front part of it and sand it again before I put my chalk paint on. It just was too slick so it was bubbling up a little bit but I will have my secretary to show y'all and I am getting flooring from uh, Home Depot delivered next week. I am so excited to get that nasty carpet out of my front area and I will do a home tour when I get um, all of that furniture rearranged and I have a wall to paint green. It's gonna be so fun. So I know some of y'all enjoy decorating. I'll, I'll be sharing that later. And um, I also got a pew from a church pew from our first church we were serving in in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, if you know where that is, not, to, not too far from Tulsa. The pew is too large for us to move. It's been sitting in Jim's parents' house for 20 five years almost and I have wanted it in my house that whole time so I'm finally getting that pew back but it has really deteriorated the condition is bad so I will be um, sharing that process with you but thank you so much for watching I appreciate your encouragement and support and I hope you're doing well as I say at the end of all my videos in the book of Psalms chapter 90 verse 17 it says may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands happy Mother's Day The winner for the rabbit is Susan Alston. And the winner for the tulip pattern is Mary Lou W.